Ah, so I can't believe I finally made it to Las Vegas for the 2022 SEMA show. You know, obviously because of COVID, 2020 was a bust, and I wasn't going to come in 2021 when they had masks. So here we are. Now, for those of you who do not know what SEMA means, it means Specialty Equipment Manufacturers Association. It's actually an association that monitors rules and regulations and also improves education of people in the specialty equipment field or automotive aftermarket field. So I would suggest that look at the links below in the video, please read them. There are some links to SEMA and you can keep on top of some of the things that they're doing. So at this show, it's not just all about the cool cars and the great looking models and the great looking engines and pieces of that you wanna put your car together. There's also seminars going on and instructional uh, uh, examples of things you may be doing like body work and so the, the videos that are out there already cover all these things there's a lot of people with i see guys with four or five teams of people covering all different aspects of the show it's impossible to actually see the show within a week it's too big because they're covering everything automotive aftermarket that means camping equipment auto body work paint work you know, millions of different paint guns, different wheels, different tires, and of course, the main high performance show, which everybody loves, all the cool cars and all the cool builds. So I love the builds, I love the cars, and I can go around explaining them. I've done that, and pretty much I think a lot of people can do that better than I can. But what I was looking around for was something that would pop. So what I did was I spent a couple of days looking around for something that I thought would be of interest to my channel and the people who watch it. And I came across laser welding. I know laser welding has been around for years, actually in the production level of manufacturing transmission gears, where they actually put synchronizer assemblies onto the gear via laser welds. But I didn't know it was available by hand now. So check out this video. I hope you enjoy it. I think it'll be interesting to you. And for those of you that are doing a lot of production welding, this may be a game changer. So I'm at the Sarah light safe light weld booth at the SEMA show, South Hall, upper floor. These guys specialize in laser welding. Now I was a production welder for many years and what I first noticed about these welds was the consistency of the welds, the consistency of the penetration of the welds and how beautiful they look, but more importantly, how fast it takes. So I'm gonna show you how these machines work and what they're about. Then, what is uh, this? This is a uh, this is three sixteen plate stainless steel. Mm -hmm. This is completely fusion welded, and we back purged the back of it, so it comes out nice. And then what we when did you is say fusion weld, you just put it together, no wire feed exactly. at all. But but welded together, mm -hmm. no wire feed. We were just kind of traveling with, with the laser. Feed with the laser, and we back purged it so we don't get that nasty stuff in the back. Now, what do you mean by back purging it? Uh, we were it? we were feeding nitrogen oh, behind then, it. How do you do that normally welding though? Is it? Is there a, uh, like a... Yeah, so um, I don't know if you can see in there, but we're actually right there. So that plate right there, we have a hose that we can connect to it. And what we do is we put these two pieces together in there. And, a, and the nitrogen is coming out underneath it. Exactly, and we usually will tape it off so that all the nitrogen stays underneath the weld. Mm -hmm. And when we weld over it, you have the proper shielding gas to not get that ugly crystal stuff right. when you're doing stainless steel. That's amazing. And this one actually we, so this is fusion welded and we stuck it in the press brake and bent it directly on the On the, on weld. the weld to create that radius yeah. like that. And that basically goes to show how So what you fusion welded this straight? Straight, yeah. So you, okay, you're gonna mention that, so that's even more trick. <laughs> so you fusion welded this straight, yep. flat. This is, this is this exactly. So that was like this, came out like that. Then you bent it at an angle, mm -hmm. and we have no cracking, no nothing at yep. all like that. That's something else. That this, that this basically is the best way to show how much stronger a laser weld is. Sure. Than a weld. And what do you think on this type of process? Like when you just fuse this, how long did it take just to go through this, just that piece? Uh, I probably would say maybe 55 centimeters a minute. I'm talking about time-wise. How long? Oh, time-wise. Uh, I don't know, like a minute or two. Right, so a minute yeah. is done like that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and again, pretty fast. again, did you clean this up or anything like this? Or is yeah, it... this one we did a cleaning pass with a laser. So basically mm -hmm. it's just like the laser etching the surface of mm -hmm. the metal to take off oxidation. Right, amazing. Very yeah. cool, that's very <laughs> nice. Excellent. 
want you to look at the smoothness of these welds here. Just check that out. Something else, huh? So on here, what we're looking at is we've got this weld that's, we want to call it TIG-like, mm -hmm. but it's basically the pulsation of the laser that's causing that, exactly. you're saying? We're, we're pulsing the laser at three hertz. Right. So it does it automatically. You yeah. set that at that to pulse at three hertz, mm -hmm. and it just comes out like that. Exactly, yeah. Brilliant. So in the lower portion is a pulsed, would you pulse this at? You said same thing? Uh, yeah, we pulse it at three hertz also. Three hertz. And this is no pulsing, yeah. con continuous laser all the way across. Mm -hmm. And you can see how it gives you that fused look. Mm -hmm. In fact, over here I was looking at that piece, this, uh, this aluminum does the same thing oh, over here. So here we have this kind of radius weld over here. It's pulsed, but it's very really smooth looking. And I mean, that's amazing looking. There's no piling of aluminum, it almost just looks like it was brazed. Yeah, exactly. Right. This is another piece, actually. This is um, right. this is not wire fed. This is TIG rod. This is me riding the gun on top of a TIG rod. You can do that still. Yeah, and I was just skipping the gun on top of it to kind of create the the TIG look. Right. But you can totally just ride it smooth, and you'll have the same exact fusion look weld. Right. When you're doing a normal, like say, aluminum with TIG welding, you're using AC current. Exactly. right instead of direct current is that the same thing how does it work with the different types of currents using with laser it doesn't matter in it, other words it doesn't really matter yeah. so the laser runs off of 220 volt single phase 24 right. amps so not a lot really you so there's no like wire. setting to ac then to dc no, or anything like that because all it really is it's it's really focused light right that's directly striking the metal that's, right that's why um, like this piece right here this is just an old piece of tube. We slap right. the MAF flange on it and the AN fitting. Right. And we hit it with a laser. And it, right. usually with TIG welder, you'd have to scotch bright this. Oh, yeah. You, you know, have to clean it up and prep it and the whole bit to get it like that. But since you're not welding with electrons, you're just hitting it with directly with light. It doesn't really care. The light will just burn through the oxides and strike the metal and melt it. Right. Pretty neat. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. All right. So now we're in the welding booth here. And this is your laser. And the, and the wire feed is coming right out at the end. So basically, the laser beam's coming out here. Laser beam's coming out here. And then you're, it's going to literally melt, strike the, the, wire. Strike the wire and put it into the, the piece. OK, let's, let's do this. Sure, OK. So first things first, the most important part of laser welding is the eye safety. So you're going to have to wear laser safety glasses. OK. Uh, Pipes. I don't know if you need to wear your glasses underneath. This no. might be better if you want to wear your glasses. No, it's okay. Underneath. It's okay. I can, I can wear them without my glasses. I can okay. see. So put these on. So put those on. But there's a special, look how I look here. It's a special yeah, it's lens in here. Laser glass. Okay. So it's not, I'm not going to melt my eyelids or something like that. Like in the, yeah. So the, the biggest. Um, Actually, it looks different color too. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of blue tinted. Right. Yeah, the biggest problem with, with laser welding, the biggest safety issue is that it puts out a lot of IR. And when, when your eyes focus a lot of IR, it damages your retinas. It can cause bleeding back there and cause dark spots in your vision. <laughs> it's not like regular welding where um, the arc causes burns to your cornea. Which right. Can heal. When, you're, when your retina is focused on laser and you get a dark spot back there, it's there forever. Oh, we don't want that. We don't that. Okay. And the worst part of it too is if you get enough IR back there, you can go blind from it. And there's no coming back from that. Okay. So you need to wear the glasses as well as the helmet that has the same rating of laser safety glass in the front as well as a reflective aluminum plate so that there's no way you can strike yourself with a laser when you're trying to get up close and personal looking where you're going with the welding. Got it. So I'm going to put this on too? Yep, you're going to put these on too. Okay. I need to actually grab some orange goggles. I only have one helmet right now. I think one of my colleagues has it. I'll be right back. <laughs> Sorry. I'm just trying to weld some... Uh, we're trying to weld some 
stainless plates together. Okay. You can do a T joint just to make it easy, and okay. I can have you try it too if you want to try sure, it. Sure, yeah. Well, okay. Yeah, of course. Is this some sort of inner gas that's going through that as well? Yeah, so we have uh, nitrogen gas going through it. Um, okay. Actually, right now we have argon going through it because we ran out of nitrogen. So you can run the argon or nitrogen, basically. Yes. Um, IPG, the manufacturer of the welder, they recommend running argon with aluminum mm -hmm. and nitrogen with steel and stainless. Mm -hmm. But realistically, you can run. So shielding or gas or shouldn't matter. Gas. Yeah. Okay. So uh, let me get some of these plates ready. You have a gas trigger down here, this more big orange one. Mm -hmm. Then you have your laser trigger up here. So the gas, once you hit the trigger, stays on? Uh, the gas you have to hold in order to fire the laser. Okay, got it. And there's also a touch safety on it. If you notice, the back of the gun here has a green light. It's mm -hmm. solid yellow. I mean, sorry, solid green means the laser will not fire. Okay. If I touch it where my ground safety is, it'll flash green indicating the laser is ready to fire. Got it. Okay. That's just extra safety so that when you pull up and you're still on the trigger, you don't accidentally go shooting random things. Okay, yeah. Okay. So run a, a bead on this one. You're running wattage now instead of amperage. Yes. So sorry. Actually, i got to switch this a little bit to the right mode. And this is the pulse rate of the laser is 3 hertz? Gotcha. I'm going to pulse this one just so we can minimize the warpage on the material. And what is the wobble length in millimeters? Basically how much you can move or how much the, the light is going to move? So that's basically, I don't, I don't know if the camera can see it. Yeah, I can see. That's that red dot right there. Right. That's the spot size of the laser. Gotcha. If I press the gas trigger, you notice it yes. widens. Basically that's the laser scanning left and right. Okay. Burning the material. So basically the width of the weld almost. Exactly. Yeah. Got it. people oh my god it's a little bit cold we could um, we could slow down the fire speed a little bit but also notice that he's using now with his bare hands and not with a glove on that the heat is really only focused on the weld It'll, it, the heat will eventually travel up. Of course, yes. But right after the weld, you can usually pick up the material. Mm -hmm. um, I'll run the same bead in the back with the correct wire speed. It seems like someone messed with my wire feeder. Okay. <laughs> so I'll run this at a um, little bit slower wire speed, and the weld should come out perfect this time. types of laser welding, you're not really going to get the pinholes typically that you're, you're going to get with regular TIG welding. Um, you still actually can. There, um, so there is a, a way of like making sure, like, yeah. it, like the way they used to have it, where so it that, still goes the arc for a little bit to fill, yeah. right? So usually, um, that's, at least from what I've noticed, that's dependent on the wobble frequency. Right. And that's basically how fast the laser is scanning left and right. That's, okay. Um, that's directly that. related to your wobble length. So if you have a set one, you could technically get a pinhole because it could be too wide. Exactly. Got it. Yeah. Pretty intense. Pretty intense. Okay. I think that's good. That's good. Let me, okay. You know, yeah. Did you still want to try one? Yeah, I'll give, well, I'll give it a shot. Yeah, sure. Okay. Yeah. Uh, let me set one up for you. All right. All right. Here we go. So I'm going to be welding this one now. We're going to see how it works out. Okay. What's the rundown? All right. So 
You always want to maintain a 40 to 70 degree angle on the gun. Okay. And since your weld is going to be this way, you also need to add a 45 degree angle this way and point the laser directly into the weld. Into the into basically into this the seam. into the seam over yeah. here. Okay. So that red guide beam, mm -hmm. that is exactly where your laser will strike. So at any point in time, if you, let's say, were to decrease the angle of the gun this way, you're going to end up welding on the floor. If it's right. too much, you're going to end up on the wall. Got it. So just make sure you keep the same angle all the way throughout the weld. All right. And then once you get to the end, do not let go of the buttons. Mm -hmm. Just lift straight up so the wire doesn't get stuck. Okay. okay? As soon as you touch it and you're pressing the gas, you should see the yellow or the green light flashing. As soon as I Once touch, it flashes, you should just be able to pull the laser trigger. Right? Yep. So and then just um, let it push you along. Oh, okay. Like this. Got it. There you go. The most important part is aligning it where you want the beam to go. Yeah. I don't have my glasses on, so I can't really see that well. Yeah, you're a little bit on the wall there, but that's all right. <laughs> that's I can't, I can't, time. I can't see. Oh yeah, I see. Yeah, <laughs> I didn't even know I was there. I see. We'll flip it around. You can do the other side. Okay. And then um, let me get my glasses on. Sure, sure, sure. Put these on, Chris. Oh, Earlier, when you want to terminate the weld, mm -hmm. um, you need to. Pull up right, pull instead up. of letting go of the trigger right. so that um, it basically doesn't so. stick. So we'll flip this around. You can try to do the other side. Can we do it from this side so I see more light on it? Like you do it. Um, yeah, sure. Yeah. Absolutely. That's better. Yep. And you, you want to make sure also that you apply a little bit of pressure to the wire mm -hmm. so it doesn't walk off the tip of the gun. Got it. But not too much that it can't push you backwards. Am I on? You want to be Time, right? So here you are for a first time. There you go. It's crazy. That's you know. So imagine if you're just doing this for a few a few times, it's not really that hard to do at all yeah. with that. I mean, once you get it down, you get the feel down. Exactly. You're just cooking. It's all about pointing the laser in the right direction because it's so easy to walk off. Sure. No, yeah, because I could see I could see the pressure and how it works now and how to feel. But it's actually doing the work for you almost. Yeah, that's yeah. that's what's amazing. It's actually it's actually almost doing the work for you. Look at that. I gotta show everybody again. Look at this well, it's crazy. Look at that. You know, something I forgot to mention about the welding is the fact that on a laser welder, there is no tungsten electrode. So you don't have to worry about, on the old school ones where you had to ball up the tungsten electrode for aluminum welding, and also the fact that eventually the electrodes do wear and get into your weld and contaminate your weld. Or sometimes you might hit the electrode against something and then you have to kind of take the electrode apart, grind it and clean it up. So you're not gonna have any of that anymore. So I just wanna let you know that that was it. Pretty cool. All right, man. You got to thank this guy a lot for showing me how this stuff works. No I'm sure you people are going to really like it. You know, I mean, this is something different. I hope you enjoyed it. Give me a thumbs up. Thanks for subscribing.